So a lot of people that watch my videos are new grads or computer science majors that are looking to become either software engineers or program managers or some variant of those. So I thought it would be helpful to sort of go through the differences of what makes a software engineer a software engineer and the responsibilities of say a program manager for those curious computer science students or other technical related majors. And these are two very common paths for, you know, computer science majors or technical related majors. So just as some background, so you believe a little bit about what I'm talking about, I've had software engineering internships both in the Department of Justice and at Northrop Grumman, and I'm now currently a technical program manager at Microsoft. So I'll mostly just be talking from the experiences that I've gone through. So first, the software engineering track, and as a software engineer, you can probably imagine you'll likely be coding for most of the day. So I'd probably say like five to six hours a day, depending on the day, and even as a technical program manager, I'm coding about six hours a day. And that's mostly because the team I'm on right now really needs software development work done, so I need to sort of, you know, fill that role. So when you join a company, you'll likely be assigned to a team, and within the first couple weeks, you'll find out what exactly you'll be working on, you know, what product, what feature, you know, what service you're actually going to be doing software development work on. So specifically at large tech companies, you'll likely be assigned to a team that works on something very small or something very compartmentalized. For example, if you join Microsoft, maybe you'll join the Microsoft Office team and then you'll join sort of like a sub team, say in Microsoft Word, and you and somebody else might be directly responsible for working on, you know, some feature of Microsoft Word. So you'll likely not be doing these sort of grand projects that are gonna be the next billion dollar product, at least in the beginning, but maybe if you work for like a tech startup, you might have a more broader impact. So in a lot of tech companies, the software development work done is typically completed through some variant of the Agile framework. So each period of work is called a sprint, and sprints can usually vary between, you know, one or two weeks. I know at Microsoft, our sprints are two weeks long. So within that sprint, you'll have a certain capacity. So like I mentioned earlier, my capacity is six hours a day of actual software development work. So over that two week period, that would be about 60 hours of software development work. And the other time is usually spent either in meetings or doing more PM oriented work. So you may be wondering like, how do you actually know what to work on? How do you know what to plan for? Do you just think of ideas? How are things paced? And this is where user stories come in. So typically there is a backlog of user stories, which are generally, you know, functionality or something specific you need to add to the product. And these are usually written by program managers in order to complete a certain task. So for example, there might be a user story to build the login page or login functionality or the landing page, and there may be a user story to set up the SQL database. So anything like that, that's sort of a bite-sized bit of software development. And during a sprint, you'll take on a certain number of these user stories, and at the end of the sprint, you'll likely demo for the team what you were able to accomplish, and if you actually need to push anything to the following sprint. Now, this video isn't meant to give you all of the intricacies of the Agile framework, but just having sort of like a brief knowledge on what that entails could hopefully give a little bit of insight into how things are actually paced. So for me, since a lot of my responsibilities are more similar to that of a software engineer, when I'm going into a sprint, I'll be like, you know, okay, these two days I'm working on, you know, database integration. And then when I finish that, I'm like, okay, the next three days I'm working on improving our testing framework. And then this week I'm working on, you know, building the landing screen or, you know, whatever, et cetera, you get it. And also as a software engineer, you'll likely just be working on a single product at a time. So especially at large tech companies, you know, if you're at Google, you're most likely not gonna be doing software development work both on Gmail and Google Cloud. Therefore, as a software engineer, there's always something more to code, some other feature to add. There's always more work to be done. Fortunately, at Microsoft, there's a great work-life balance, so I never feel you know, too overwhelmed or too burnt out where I feel like I can't complete the sprint work that I'm assigned. And on the opposite side of the coin, I never feel like I don't have anything to do. Like, I usually feel like whatever work I have is like almost a perfect amount of work to where like 
I'm still getting a decent amount of work done, but I'm also not having to like stay up on weekends and code every night at 1 a.m. So now the career progression of a software engineer varies at each company, but it'll typically follow something like this. So you'll likely start out as a software engineer one or whatever the company equivalent of a, you know, intro level software engineer is. And then you'll likely move to a software engineer two. And then after that, there's sort of like two divergent paths you can go down. So you can move sort of down the individual individual contributor route. So that would sort of look like, okay, you're at software engineer two, and then you'd become senior software engineer, then principal software engineer, and then eventually distinguish, distinguished engineer, at which point you're like the subject matter expert in that specific technology. Alternatively, you can go down sort of a people management route. So say you're at software engineer two, you can move laterally to program manager two, which is extremely common to move from a software engineer to a more program manager related role, or maybe even senior program manager. Potentially you could become a software engineering manager where you sort of manage software engineers or even a technical lead or a product lead. So as you can see, going down the software engineer route, you generally start off doing a lot of the software development work. And if you really like that, you can continue down the individual contributor route, or alternatively, you can go down that management route and sort of manage teams and manage other software engineers. Now, the other common path for computer science majors or other technical related majors take is that of the program slash product slash project slash technical program manager route. As a PM at Microsoft, my experience has been your responsibility sort of relies on making sure the product, the program, the project, whatever you're working on is moving smoothly. So that could include a lot of things like making sure software engineers are set up for success, collaborating with other teams throughout the company, talking to customers and understanding their needs, creating presentations, creating demos, tracking overall team productivity, and you know, presenting milestones and overall productivity to upper level management. Note that the specific PM responsibilities will greatly vary on the company. So a PM at Amazon will most likely be different and have different responsibilities than say a PM at Microsoft. So as I said earlier, a lot of what I do right now as a technical PM at Microsoft is a lot of software development work because that's sort of what my team needs right now. But I also do a decent amount of PM work too. So for my team, that usually involves writing user stories about certain functionality that needs to be added to the product. Going to meetings is also a big uh, thing for PMs or hosting meetings, running meetings. I also like create architecture diagrams or more, you know, macro level perspective plans for the product in terms of both, you know, software development as well as deployment. But one of the most fun responsibilities I've had was doing the product demos. So I got to flex uh, my YouTube editing skills a little bit, which is definitely fun. But from my perspective, the program manager role is a lot less defined than the software engineer role. So as opposed to the software engineering route, you may be a PM of multiple products or projects or programs, whatever your role is. So you have to sort of balance the way you split your time across those and making sure those are all running smoothly. You know, whereas a software engineer is usually only focused on the software development of one specific product or one specific feature. And from my experience, at least as being a Microsoft PM, it's sort of like a catch all. So let's say like your team really needs software development work done. So assuming the PM has technical knowledge, they can sort of fill in that role. Or let's say there needs to be a meeting with customers so they can shift to be more customer facing and prepare for that. Or if there's upcoming big presentations, they need to prepare for that and shift to, you know, presentation mode. So the responsibilities and requirements of a PM can vary a lot, not only just based on the company, but also what just needs to be done. So for the career development of the program manager route, you generally start off as program manager one, which is, you know, the first level, which is equivalent to the software engineer one. And generally at most tech companies, they have similar salaries. And then likely after PM one, you'll move to PM two, but Unlike the software engineering route, it's much less common to go from PM2 and move laterally to software engineer 2. Now, it's not like unheard of, but it's generally less common to go from PM2 to software engineer than it is to go software engineer to PM. So after PM2, then there's generally, you know, senior program manager and then principal program manager and then eventually 
vice president, you know, a VP, and then potentially director role, and then, I don't know, maybe CEO after that. But specifically for PM, as you move up the PM ladder, you gain more and more breadth in terms of project oversight, and you gain more and more responsibilities. So if you think about it, no one's really going to blame the program manager one for a product not being released on time or not meeting certain deadlines, but they might blame the senior program manager or the principal program manager because they have more oversight and more responsibility. But with more responsibility comes higher pay, so you know, there's that. But it's also important to keep in mind that the company culture will also play into the different responsibilities for your software engineering role and your program manager role. So a software engineer at a tech startup with 20 people will likely have a lot more responsibilities than a software engineer at a large tech company with thousands of employees. And mostly I'm just talking from my personal experiences, so they could not be accurate at all, but that's what I've experienced. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this video useful in sort of comparing and contrasting the software engineer route and the program manager route. These are two very, very common paths that computer science majors or other technical related majors typically want to go down. And I've gotten a lot of questions about what a PM actually does because as a CS major or a math CS major, I didn't really understand what a PM did until I really got into it. Also, I want to say thank you guys so much. I'm almost close to a thousand subscribers. And depending on when you watch this or when I release it, when I finish editing it, maybe I'll be at a thousand subscribers. It's honestly crazy to think about Thank you guys so much for the support. I started this channel a little over a year ago, and I'm glad that I could help you guys out, give you some advice, give you some laughs, maybe improve your British accent just a wee bit, make you cringe at it, maybe. Thank you guys so much for your support, and specifically if you, I was thinking of doing like a, a thousand subscriber special video, so if you have any ideas for that, feel free to comment them down below. That would be awesome. Maybe a Q&A maybe a specific topic you guys are wondering about, whatever you guys are feeling, comment down below. But if you are new to the channel, if you like college advice, computer science, tech, and uh, you know, career advice, consider subscribing to the channel. You will always get bad British accents from me, so that could be a reason to subscribe further or unsubscribe, but tune into a future video of mine, my future self will thank you dearly. Tune into a past video of mine and my past self also thanks you. See you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.